What is going on, YouTube? Are you here to learn the best plays in Warzone? Are you trying to learn how to play like the absolute elite players? Did you guys click on this video in order to learn the best movement possible in Warzone? Did you guys click on this video so that you guys can learn how to get the best accuracy known to man? If you said yes to any of those questions, this is the video for you. What is going on Wolfpack Savage here? In today's video, we'll be spectating, breaking down, and analyzing various in-game situations. We're gonna put ourselves in a position of a random squad and go through the exact scenario that they're in and point out the mistakes that they're making in-game and the things that they may be doing right, as well as the enemies we come in contact with. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. Destroy the like button. Let's go ahead and get this video to 2,500 likes. And as always, if you guys are looking for teammates to play with, make sure you join our Discord community and utilize the Looking for Groups pages to your advantage to go out there and find some teammates that actually have microphones. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are spectating our first squad of the video. And we are spectating our dude Lopez who's got a full team up. Now, before we dive into the action and whatever it is that they're about to do, let's talk about the circle and let's try to read the circle because when it comes to end game, reading circle is pretty drastic. Whether you want to play aggressive or passive, you got to be able to judge the circle and figure out how to rotate to the best position. So when we look at the circle, unfortunately, all we can see is a mini map. But when we look at the circle, where do we need to go? Where do we want to go and where can we go? So realistically, where you want to be is gonna be this building area right here because it takes up the majority of the circle. And because it takes up the majority of the circle, there's a greater chance that the next circle will probably favor that area. Not always the case, but there is a greater chance. However, when we look at this map, it's gonna be very hard for us to work our way over there. There are six enemy teams left, meaning they're definitely gonna have some squads in these houses already. Then we already have a ping and loadout drops over here in graveyard. And of course we have this huge ass opening right here that has no cover. Now it may not look that big because it's just a street, but crossing that street with no cover is gonna be crucial, especially when you have all these windows staring down your throat. So we wanna go to this compound. However, I don't think now's the time because there still are so many teams left. What I would try to do is work this area to the best of my ability. Try to take care of everybody in this area. That way, when we do have to push across, we don't have to worry about who's behind us. A lot of players in this position will make the mistake to be like, shit, I wanna go to this building. Let's go ahead and go now. And again, the risk you run is running across, having to suppress fire on those buildings, having to fight people from graveyard, and of course, anybody else who's in this area as well. So let's go ahead and see what the enemy team does. Now, with saying that, you wanna clear this area. You don't wanna wait for the gas to push you all in together. So for instance, if there is an enemy team in the building right in front of us, this one right here, you wanna go ahead and clear it out. And actually, we can hear some, <laughs> we hear some footsteps right now, but you wanna clear it out as soon as possible. Don't try to fight those enemies and the gas at the same time. So you need the whole squad here, get Purple's dumbass back here, and let's go in and win, the, win this fight because they might not be the only squad here as well. There's a lot of buildings in this. Look at the mini map. That shit is loud, yeah. <laughs> they need to be paying attention to all the pings and everything on the minimap as well. There's a guy in the building right here. We know that because he popped up on the minimap. There's a guy on top of our roof. I think he's on the ground level right behind us with a pistol and we're just completely oblivious. Do not let a guy coming back with a pistol kill us. All right, so unfortunately they did fight the team while in the gas but it ended up working out i don't like the fact that they sat here for however long and waited for the gas to force the fight again get the fights won and get out now to be 100 percent honest and transparent i would go ahead and get my teammate back what savage the buy station so far in the gas you're crazy look look we got plenty of money we got a full gas mask there's no reason why we can't go back in there buy our boy back buy a gas mask and work our way back out now also let's pay attention to where the next circle's at oh thank god we didn't rotate early right because now we kind of have somewhat of an advantage the circle favors us anybody who's across the street in this building over here or in that compound is going to have to push across to us so what do we do at this point what do we do well i would go ahead and try to take out as many enemies as i can so fighting the guys at this compound is going to be a little difficult for the next 30 seconds because everyone's going to be hiding 
like a baby back bitch. Y'all know that. 30 seconds left on the timer. The gas is going to come in. I'm going to say 45 seconds before the gas actually forces them out. Not to mention there are five teams left, four enemy teams total. We know that one team's at graveyard. That's a given. There's not going to be two because it's wide open. They'd already kill each other off. However, you definitely want to pay attention to this area and not allow a team to push over across the street into our territory. So what I would do right now is leave two of our teammates to watch this angle, playing the buildings, playing the rooftops, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of cover, a lot of concealment, a lot of things to favor us. But I would want one of my teammates to go take out this asshole over here. I'd want him to. I don't know if he's solo. I don't know if he's due. I don't know what the situation over here is. But we have a nice little two-story building right here. Go to the second floor, utilize the window. That way you have a little bit more of an angle on the graveyard area and start taking these guys out. Because again, the last thing you want to do is sit here and hide and wait and allow all these teams to push to your territory at the same time. Crucial mistake a lot of players make. They play too passive and they end up getting pinched. So I'd go ahead, take out the bozos at graveyard and then sink back up and focus up on the compound right in front of us. Let's see what happens. It's, it's evident we're not getting our teammate back. They said, screw you. Actually, purple's going in. But what we need to be doing is paying attention to Graveyard. Again, look, we've got a guy sitting right here. There's a huge chance there's more teammates of his that have ghosts. This guy could have come back from the Gulag. We don't know. And guess what I don't want to happen? I don't want them to push across. We got to, like, form some kind of, like, security shield around us using our guns and get some eyes on them. But instead, we're sitting here. Well, that couldn't have been better timing. A bit weird, weird. Savage said to go to the second story and use the windows to get an angle. How did he know there were windows here? Duh, it's not magic. It's just common sense. All right, now look, I want you guys. In what are we doing? What are we doing? We have an entire staircase we can utilize to kill these guys. There's three enemies near us, but because we failed to get some eyes on the enemy, they were able to force themselves over, and now it's a 3v1. We are by ourselves. We're going to lose this fight. Granted, yes, we got some knocks, but at what expense? And again, that's just an example of playing too passive. Instead of sitting there behind the wall plating up, we should have been plating while we ran to this building so we can get eyes on the enemy as fast as humanly possible. Team just going absolutely ham sandwich, executing the bodies and going for the res before they won the fight. And to be honest, <laughs> oh, the whole thing all got wiped. Gotta win those, man. Now I'm gonna be freezing the video a lot because there's a lot of points to make when it comes to end game. So what went wrong? What went wrong? A lot of things. So. The initial guy we were spectating was in a 1v3. We already established that. What happened that he didn't do? He didn't ping the enemies. He didn't ping when he was down. He's probably slamming his controller, cursed down his mom, begging for supper, whatever the hell it is. He wasn't doing what he's supposed to do. He wasn't utilizing his comms to tell his team, hey guys, there's at least three enemies. Could be four, not sure. But make sure you don't stick the res until you kill at least three. And that's exactly what they did. And uh, it forced the wipe. So again, bad communication, bad teamwork, and also playing too passive at an in-game situation. That team had the favor. They were the only team safe in the circle. We knew where the other teams were at, but still we just played a little too passive. We hid because we were scared and ultimately we lost the game. So here we are spectating Norwood Rocket 16 kills, running solo dolo. Now, again, gas mask play is the wave. He's got $24,000. $24,000, bro, go get your teammates back, all of them, have a little party, buy a gas mask shit, buy two. But what are we doing? What are we doing right now? How do you have 16 kills? And see, this is why I make in-game circle videos. This is exactly why I make in-game circle videos because players who can drop 16 kills freeze up at the end. This is exactly what I was trying to explain in the intro, that some players are really good at the game and have great accuracy, but when it comes to in-game situations, they freeze up because they don't know what to do. It's like, yeah, we're buying our teammates back now, that's cool, but the other team's probably going to be rotating towards us. And a little too late. A little too late. We should have rotated way earlier instead of sitting there looking out of the window. And yes, now we still outnumber the enemy team 3-2, to two, but we have no weapons, so what's really going to happen? Yeah, this is it. Timing is crucial. Planning is crucial. Execution is crucial. The entire situation is crucial. And unfortunately, we failed on all fronts. Honestly, not a bad game to start the video with. A lot of lessons to be learned. And guys, I'm telling you right now, you need to start taking in-game situation videos more serious than any other videos because this is the one that's going to solidify the win. All right, here we are spectating on. That was pretty uh, self-explanatory. Come on, man, you had a sweat skin. You were just standing there reading the Bible. What are you doing? You're in the middle of war. All right, so we got... All right, he's got some He's got a, some pretty good builds, not gonna lie. 
classic, classic aiming at nothing and spraying and praying. I get it. At least he's keeping his body moving while he's fighting. He's not just standing there like a stagnant object. He's actually jumping and sidestepping and trying to work angles. I can respect it. Good on on. Good on on. And again, we have the knock. Now, I like the fact he's not pushing for it, but we could have got that execution for sure using the primary weapon. I don't know what the hell Ludwig was doing going into a 1v whatever. That man went in like he was Rambo. And I think it's a 1v3 now. It looks like there's three different enemies. We need to watch out. They're going to be pushing on our left-hand side. And yep, there's a third one on the right-hand side. So as far as that man's concerned, there really wasn't anything I, I believe he could do. He could have got the execution and forced it into a 2v2 fight. But unfortunately, because Ludwig lacked teamwork, he went in there like Rambo, died instantly, and put us in a position where we were just basically playing a corner and they came at us from both sides and they got the kill. Not to mention, Circle's relatively big and it's going to be moving in in the next 14 seconds. There really is no reason to go ahead and push a team camping in a building. We could have just played the edge of the gas and waited for this team to come to us. That's also a strategy you guys could do. If you guys aren't comfortable pushing into a building at an in-game situation, just gatekeep them, man. Just gatekeep because this squad had to come to us. And I want you guys to notice something. If we would have gotten on a rooftop right here, the moment these guys left their little hiding spot, we could have shot at them. You don't have to do that. One, look at the edge. There ain't shit there, right? There's a couple ridges and stuff over here. But there ain't shit. What I would have done is got to this rooftop, got an angle on the enemies. The moment they cross out in the open, bada bing, bada boom, they're dead, right? So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now we're in combat spectating our dude Wells. When you get the team and you get out of here, 100%. Let's go. Don't collect 200. Don't do shit. Blue. What are you doing? And again, you know, when it comes to teamwork, it's not just comms. It's not just working together. It's just, you know, they always got that one teammate that just does whatever the hell they want to do. You know, they just, they're just off the whole time. You got to, you got to light a fire on their ass and get them out of here. Because again, we need to start focusing on position. Now let's look at this circle. Look at this shit. All right, so Blue's by himself right now. There only appears to be one enemy. There he's right there behind this. Yeah, that way, that way. Sometimes, look, I want you guys to notice this right here. This guy, Wells, has nine kills, so he's probably a pretty decent player. But so the moment he ADS, he didn't see the enemy sitting right here. So I wanted to freeze the image here and make a good point. A lot of people are trying to copy other creators' settings and a lot of creator sensitivity and things like that. And that's fine. You definitely need you know, something to work off of. But just because someone's using max sensitivity doesn't mean you have to either. You guys need to develop eyes in order to read 20 sensitivity or, you know, 1600 DPI or whatever you're using. You guys need to develop an eye and a reaction time for that sensitivity. Stop just instantly jumping into COD, whipping up your sensitivity on max settings because that's what everyone else is doing and try to get in here. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because he looks straight at the enemy. I saw the enemy. He didn't. And why didn't he do it? Because his shit is way too fast for him. Yes, he's got nine kills. Yes, he's actually kind of accurate with his gun. But when it comes to scanning and, and pressure situations, he's failing greatly. As you can see here, he breaks away from the target, had no idea, still has no idea. And all of a sudden, he tracks his teammates' tracers and he's able to find the uh, enemy target. So guys, I really hope that solidifies a point that if you're having trouble focusing on what's going on around you, turn your sensitivity down. You don't have to have the fastest sensitivity in the world to be the best player. So over here, looking at the mini map, there's a nice couple ridges, especially where Blue's at. This area right here has got a nice, nice set of ridges, some good trees. It's a great vantage point for sure. Um, but still, the circle will go either way. You definitely would rather it finish over here because right here, there's really not much of shit. So here we are jumping in the Bertha and we're going to be driving. Now, this is a position where you definitely want to keep your mobile cover. Because if the circle does dive this direction, we're going to need to have something more than a couple of trees, a one or two rocks, and that's it. Like I said, most of this is wide open. Where I would want it to finish is where Blue's at with this giant ridge right here, all these trees, uh, you know, this barricade, a lot better cover, right? But still, I'd play this area right here um, just until the circle does tell me to go elsewhere. And that's just throwing audibles, man. My original plan would have failed, but it wouldn't have cost us our life. However, this might, this might. They're playing super hyper aggressive, which I'm not against, but they're leaving a teammate behind. So if the teammate does get picked, he's probably gonna die. All right, all right, here we go. Making our way back. That's a better decision for sure. I mean, shit, honestly, Boneyard isn't that bad of a spot either. Lots of cover, lots of concealment, lots of everything, but you're definitely gonna have, well, actually there's only three teams left. 
if there were seven or eight teams, I'd probably be worried about Boneyard, but there, there's not. It's a relatively big circle for such little amount of players. And again, for me, I'd be playing a little bit more passive for the win. I'd be playing and, and trying to get picks and trying to make the best of what I have. Because if you fail to if you fail to be aggressive enough and something goes astray, you could lose a teammate or you could all die. Granted, these guys were able to solidify it and come back up. They, they ended up coming back. It, it didn't look good for them. I'm going to be honest. Now, this is a perfect example of just playing super aggressive and not giving a shit about rotations. And normally, this is exactly what you don't want to do. Again, look where the circle's at. Circle still favors the side we were on originally. We were the only team over there. If you want the easier win and still get the same amount of kills, all you got to do is play over there. But we're taking a huge risk bringing our entire team over here in a big berth of putting ourselves between two teams just to hurry up and speed up the game. Sometimes patience plays a greater part than hyper-aggression. I may recommend playing passive in certain situations. A lot of you guys might capitalize on being aggressive. It is what it is. But still, my recommendation remains the same no matter how the outcome of this game goes. But they did play this fairly well. Not a huge fan of it, but they ended up getting the win. GG. All right, so here we are spectating Norwood and Perez. I'm assuming they're looking for a little bit of money to get a teammate back, so I can respect that. They're only short 300 bucks. Enemy spotted in the yellow house. Now, one thing we could do is just wait for them. Wait for them to come. Unfortunately, Purple said, screw that. Bitch. I'm not waiting for shitty passive hole. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and get killed real quick. So why do why would I rather us wait? Well, this the circle is going to force them to us. So there's really no reason for us to change our position this much. I really don't know what the hell we're doing right now, honestly. Again, Purple's trying to go in for a fight by himself. We're leaving our safe haven to fight a team with our entire back exposed and no cover at all. We had a fence for concealment, but that's it. Look, they can shoot through it. Weird. What they should have done. What they should have done was stayed in the house they were in, kept holding that window and just played a little bit more passive for a little bit longer, wait for that team to cross this open ass street and then got some easy kills. Once they get the easy kills and get that money, hopefully make it to the buy station in time. la di da they got the teammates back and then they're off skipping into the sunset. Unfortunately, again, uh, it looked like Norwood was having a seizure. He's just kind of going everywhere, looking really fast, not really sure what his plan was, except to die. And now Perez is by himself. All right, here. Stop. Don't do that. Do not hold angles like staircases. You're, you're hardly going to win. If it's a 1v1, you, you have a chance. If it's a 1v2, 3-4, you're dead. You can't take that many bullets and expect to live, especially holding the angle so crucial like that. Oh, and it, it's weird now. The, the tables have turned. Instead of Perez and Norwood having the favor, they flip-flopped. The team, the team that was not favored that had to come to us is now the favorite team and we have to go to them. How did that happen? How? Lack of know-how doesn't mean the squad's terrible. It just means they just don't really know how to play the end game. All right, here we are on a Batchkov. I think that's Russian. And they have to rotate all the way up the hill to the north-hand side. This is a pretty dangerous push if there is a team above them. And by above them, I mean on this ridge. Oh my God, there's a juggernaut! You know, dude. I... Activision, they, they take it out of the game and they just, they sneak it back in and then it gets glitched and then they take it out. They sneak it back in like the rats that they are. Then it gets glitched again. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before someone finds a way to abuse a juggernaut, just like the stem glitches, just like every other glitch in the game. Some things are just better off left out of the game. It's almost like it's a sign. If something's glitched, take it out. Stems are glitched all the time, take it out. It's a sign, it's a sign from the universe. Activision, your stims suck. Same thing with Juggernaut. It's a sign. Activision, your Juggernaut s definitely sucks. Imagine giving a player in Battle Royale super, super duper armor so they can drive around and jump out on you at the end game. 
All right, here we are rotating in. Now, Orange, unfortunately, is lagging behind greatly. Now, when you're rotating in, especially as a team, you need to rotate together, especially when you're in a shit spot like this. And why? Now, when it comes to getting out of a bad position and getting into a better position, you need to move as a squad. Why? We got to think of it like wildlife, right? Let's say you have some zebras running through an open field. Now, let's say there's a group of tigers or lions or whatever, or hyenas, something just fierce sitting here. What are they going to do? You think they're going to attack the whole herd? And they might. But if one guy is straggling behind, they're gonna pounce on that little bitch. They're gonna eat that man up without even giving him a chance. And that's kind of what orange is right now. Orange is the zebra. We're running in a pack, so we're kind of safe. If we get into combat, if someone starts shooting at us, we can all turn and start suppressing fire. But this guy right here is much vulnerable target because if he gets shot, we're gonna be so separated from him, we're not gonna be able to react with him. We're gonna have to find out where the enemies are. We're gonna have to wait for pings. We're gonna be at a different angle. We might not have an angle on the enemies that have an angle on him and things like that. So again, if you guys are rotating as a squad, especially in game and you can't handle your own, rotate together. Stop this bullshit. I don't know what the hell Orange was doing, but he messed up. This this here too, like why do we, why do we loot the bus? What do you need, bro? You're maxed out on ammo. You have a UAV, you have a gas mask, you have plates. What do you need? What do you need? Battle Royales. They're not, they're not looter simulators. I promise. I promise. All right. Our boy was holding on to his UAV until he got to a better position to capitalize with it. And here we go. We got an enemy team doing the flag objective, the recon objective for those sticklers out there. Like savage is not called the flag objective, the recon. Okay. Now we're just going to back off. Now the problem I have with this, and I understand the thought process. They said, you know what? Bank's going to be too difficult to push, which it is. It's not the easiest building in the world. And we're gonna go ahead and pick on an easier team. And that's fine. The problem I have is you should have came with that plan a little bit sooner. Now, why does that matter? Well, they may not die right now. This may be okay. But we just ran towards this building in the open, super confidently, like we're about to do something. Now we're turning our back to the enemies we know are there. And we're running back across the open field without cover, possibly to get shot in the back by the enemies. I'm not a huge fan of this, but they are decided to go with the easier targets. Um, then that, and that's fine, I guess. And that's fine. All right, advanced UAV goes up a little late. It probably won't last long because we called our UAV in probably 30 seconds ago. So it was already about to expire by the time our teammates were able to solidify the, the other UAVs. We also have a four-wheeler coming up behind us. Green recognizes it. Purple recognizes it. We don't give a shit. Oh, oh, there it is. Shit. Weird. Wow. We have little ants running in front of us right there on the hill. We're not there. We go ADS on them and get some shots off. Now, something you'd be paying attention to as well as other tracers. When you're in combat, don't just tunnel vision on what you're shooting at. Pay attention to everything going on around you. You don't have to focus on it. Just look at it, make mental note, and continue your fight. Look at the tracers. Where are the tracers coming from? Look at this. Look at this. Come from the hill. They're coming from the hill. Preferably, uh, probably this guy right here. So, again, if you're going to be fighting this, make sure you're not vulnerable to other enemies because there are a lot of enemies out here. Um, just make sure you're not vulnerable. Not to mention, I believe the windows on Yellow House has, also has an angle on us, too. All right, respect the down, rotating from one target to the other to get the next down. All right, now look, I want you guys to notice as well, great job by Batch going from one team to another and reading the mini-map. However, we need to pay attention to what Orange is doing as well. Savage, there's a lot of shit going on right now. How are we supposed to do it all? So now Orange is fighting the guy behind us. We need to be aware of that. Otherwise, we're going to get shot in the back as well. Green and purple have already dove in down. Not a fan of that at all because they're going to have to climb this hill again and fight uphill the entire time. So I do not agree with what green and purple are doing. However, we may not have an option if homeboy behind us gets the kill. So we need to focus up on the guy behind us. That way we don't get shot in the back. I'm sorry, purple's just standing right there. Okay, there he goes. He, now he jumps. Orange dives off too. We didn't pay attention to the ping. Now we're gonna leave ourselves vulnerable to the guy that's behind us. I'm assuming orange didn't kill since he jumped off. Boom, there it is. There it is. Now the team that jumped off this squad right here, they're dead. I don't care if they win this fight or not. This team is dead because again, they're gonna have to climb the hill. They were just on and they're the fight. The other enemy teams holding that angle. Look at the hit fire with, look at the hit fire with, with the kilo, man. Wow. They're gonna have to fight uphill the entire time because there's still squads holding this angle. And also the guy that, that killed us from behind. Okay, okay, good read. Uh, okay, I thought I was gonna get on the four-wheeler, honestly. That would've been a good play. 
you definitely want to jump on that four wheeler for sure. Don't even think about it. Get on the four wheeler. You're gonna bleed. You're gonna, you're gonna die. You're going to die. What do you? I mean, <laughs> can we get a rewind on that? All right, now let's watch. He had a good plan, and he just sat here for four seconds. Those four seconds are crucial. I want you guys to notice where we die at. Look how close the circle is to us. Those four seconds could have been the difference between life and death. Granted, a lot of these rocks we can't climb up with the four-wheeler, but we chose to dive down here. The moment we did that, we solidified our grave. That was it. The four-wheeler was the only option. Fast reaction time was the only way out. Unfortunately, we didn't deliver either. <clears throat> but not all hope is lost. We still have Batchkoff uh, alive and looks like he's gonna be landing on the loadout. All right, here we are with Batchkoff once again, playing the edge of the circle. Explosions going off in front of us. And we said, screw it, bro. We're about to come in and solo this entire game. There's one guy. We're playing like he's a hyena. I love it. Picking the gazelle, running solo by himself. We got a guy to our left, bro. To our left. Wait, I guess it's this way. It's mirrored. And that juggernaut. Oh, you hate to see this, man. God, you hate to see this. All right, I like our position. I like this. We got some cover. We're playing on the edge. No one should know we're here. Four teams left. Juggernaut's already involved with the team. I really wouldn't worry too much about it. Hopefully they can kill each other off right here. Now I'm not one for playing passive, like this passive. You definitely want to, you definitely want to speed up your gameplay just a little bit more, but because the jugs in play, dude, I'm not against it at all. If the juggernauts on the map, dude, uh, strategy just kind of goes out the window. It's one of the reasons why I really don't like the, the juggernauts at all. Audibles are very hard. I didn't see that coming. Audibles are very hard when you have a juggernaut in play. All right, well, that was a, uh, GG for him. All right, here we are, spectating another solo. Another solo, rocking five kills. Emsley, Emsley. Oh my God, you're dead. Emsley's so fucking dead. Holy hell. Ooh. I mean, I would have given some kind of strategy to that one, but nah. No, nah, there's there's nothing. There's nothing. I got I got nothing. I got nothing, bro. Oh my god. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are spectating Mickner. Mounting is cool, but I don't know if it's this crucial. So what should we be doing right now? Well, the juggernaut looks to be by himself-ish. We've got some holes in the wall behind us. We could hopefully get some shots on the jug, and we've got sick grenades, and we've got some rockets. That's who I'd be focused on. Let Mackie fight the other two enemies that don't have Juggernaut while green and blue focus up on the Jug. We gotta get some shots off. We gotta get some explosion damage on that man so we can take him out. If we sit here, we wait for the circle to get even smaller. The Jug's gonna take the cake for sure. He's just blowing away, dude. We need, we need to get some shots off of the enemy, Rip. Oh my God, you're, you're the ballsiest in the world. That's not what I had in mind. Peek the hole in the wall. Get some shots off. That would have been a good strategy. Jumping up there for the world to see you and shoot you in the ass. Eh. What do you expect? GG. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are spectating Feast, Fist, Fies in a solo situation. Now, I'm just throwing this footage in the game for pure lols. I already know how this match ends because I happened to actually watch this one because I was mind blown when I saw someone sitting in a bush. I was walking up from the bathroom. I said, hold up, what the hell is going on here? So we're just gonna <laughs> spectate this for the lols because this is some funny shit. So we have three vehicles driving around. We had a sniper glint on us and we went ghost in the bush and the sniper forgot all about us. Look at this man, look at this man. All right, here we are finally moving out. Again, we got a Bertha driving around coming right for us. He doesn't see us though. He's focused on another enemy and here we are laying in the sticks oh now you definitely don't want to be wearing a bright ass skin for this because you will die bertha may accidentally run us over i don't think he does though because this goes on for a while Ooh, he ran over our shoes that was so damn close look at this he's playing the shit like it's a like it's a chess game vehicle moves and honestly to be real like we're trolling but to be 100 percent real he's playing this smart he's reading the mini map the moment another vehicle comes across, and the moment there's a there's an explosion or a tracer, he just goes ghost to hide. <laughs> I, this is this is this is leet. This is leet right here.
You don't have to play aggressive to win matches, ladies and gentlemen. Look how many Berthas. Look how many vehicles. We have six vehicles in this last circle. Granted, only two are driving. Now one. There are a lot of vehicles in this little bitty ending right here. I think your boy jumped out of the vehicle to go to the buy station. All right, waiting for enemies to fight. I'm going to go ahead and third party this situation. Hopefully win and get advantage. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Dude, this is playing it smart, man. This is this is a perfect example of playing it smart. Granted, I definitely am not a fan of hiding in bushes ever, but the way he's working the map right now and the way he's paying attention to the mini map is very, very strategic, despite what anyone may feel about this. Unfortunately for us, you have a gas mask. Go back in the gas. Oh, I would have rounded back into the gas, man. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Last game of the video, GG. But Wolfpack, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I do believe that the end game videos are the most important videos that I do post on the channel because a lot of you guys, y'all are fine early game, y'all are fine mid game, but it comes in game, y'all just crumble and don't get it twisted. A lot of people do. I feel like in game situations is exactly where I excel. I have a problem being aggressive early game and actually surviving to mid game. But when it comes to in game, man, I'm telling you right now, when it comes to in game, if you play the situation correctly, no matter how good you are at the game, you can solidify a win. But again, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel right now. Don't even think about it. Leave a like on the video and make sure you guys check out my other videos. But until next time, you have a good one. And good luck in Warzone. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out one of these two videos over here. And as always, click that icon to subscribe today. But until next time, you have a good one. And keep on improving.